what's actually going on inside the landfill. We've done a few story times before about composting and anaerobic digestion uh, and this narrative about how it changes over time and different microbes are doing different things. And there's a similar story that I can tell about landfills. Um, so before we get into that, you need to know what kind of landfill you're dealing with. And there's two main philosophies in landfilling. Uh, the same reactions will be going on in each generally, um, but much, much faster in one than the other. So a dry tomb uh, philosophy is basically saying, we want this to be still and unchanging and just stay there and not bother anyone. Um, and the dry part of that is because uh, microbes need moisture to be able to be alive. So the drier the waste is, the slower that it will degrade. So dry tomb landfills you can think about are about for storing waste um, rather than reacting it and degrading it. They will degrade, um, obviously, but it's about minimizing it and slowing it down. And uh, these uh, landfills will have just a slow anaerobic uh, degradation. The other side of the coin is bioreactor landfills. So rather thinking as like a repository where you just stick it and forget about it, a bioreactor is really about treating it like a reactor and maximizing that degradation. So it's a lot more like uh, the philosophy of an anaerobic digester just made out of soil rather than metal tank walls. Um, the advantage of doing a bioreactor approach is that uh, you can do more landfilling because your material will get smaller and settle down as you degrade it faster um, and that might make it more economical to mine your landfill. So there's an idea of a sustainable landfill cycle where you have a bioreactor landfill, you react all the waste down, then you go through, you mine out anything left that you can use and then you refill the same cell over and over again. I don't know anywhere that does that but it's a kind of theoretical concept that's put out there. Um, in order to make a bioreactor work, the main thing is to keep everything wet. So uh, that's done by recirculating the leachate from the bottom of the landfill back into the top of the landfill. This is the exact same idea of that um, percolate bunker reactor or leach bed reactor for our AD systems is just um, you know, bringing the leachate from the bottom, putting on the top and making sure all your microbes are wet and happy all the time and, and going really fast. Um, another thing that's different with the bioreactor landfill, yes, it will automatically go anaerobic because um, you know it's covered in soil and it's not easy for the air to get in, but you may also want to run it as an aerobic system. So you would inject air into it to stop it from going as anaerobic and that would make it produce CO2 instead of methane, or you might switch in between the two. So you might run it as uh, anaerobic for the first half of its life and maximize the gas production and use as much gas as you want. And then rather than waiting for that long tail of that first order decay curve when it keeps producing gas, switch to aerobic and just try and use that greater oxidizing power of oxygen to stabilize the remainder really quickly so you can do the next thing, reclaiming the cell or whatever you want to do. So in practice, I'd say I've, I've never actually dealt with an operating bioreactor landfill. Everything in Ontario, um, due to the regulations that I've heard of, is a dry tomb style landfill. Um, and then bioreactor is much applied in a much less limited fashion. Here are a couple of pictures of bioreactor landfills in anaerobic and aerobic modes. So in that anaerobic mode, you can see we've got our leachate being pulled off the bottom and pumped back into the top. And then our landfill gas is being extracted out of the landfill. That's those yellow arrows. In the aerobic landfill on the right, you can see the leachate is still being recirculated, but air is being pumped into the landfill rather than landfill gas being pulled out of the landfill. So anaerobic system maximizing that methane production, aerobic system trying to switch to that aerobic pathway so we're producing CO2 like a compost system rather than producing methane like an anaerobic digester. And thinking back to our lab one, 
uh, you can model the effects of doing a bioreactor, which would really speed up that kinetic K parameter of your landfill versus a dry tomb, which is really trying to slow it down. So the two curves on the screen, that dotted line is the waste acceptance curve. So uh, they put in all the waste in the, the first couple of years and then it's just steady in there. And the bioreactor landfill will spike right away um, so really, really fast and then come down really, really fast too. And somewhere around year 2016 or something, um, they intersect and after that the regular landfill is actually producing more gas than the bioreactor landfill. So the areas under each of these um, over the whole time scale would be the same. There'd be the same methane potential of the waste. The bioreactor landfill just kind of compresses the time that it takes that to be converted into gas through degradation, whereas the uh, dry tomb just stretches it out and, try and tries and keeps the effects as minimal as possible over time. So one uh, minimizes the time it takes and one minimizes the effect um, over each time step by stretching it out as long as possible. Um, so we've seen both the biochemical reactions, the, the general ones that are going on before, our aerobic landfills just like composting, um, and then our anaerobic uh, operation is just like AD. So CO2 is the main product as one, and then that uh, landfill gas mixture of CO2 and methane as the main product in the other one. However, the, that equation doesn't tell the whole story. It's a much more dynamic picture. As I've explained, a landfill is a, a constantly um, changing and building process. It's not something that you can have a, a steady state in really. It's not like a, a CSTR reactor um, where you can get to a steady state. It's something that has a, a common profile, a narrative that happens over time, which what I was alluding to. So this one's a little bit, I think, more involved than the story we've told about composting and the story we've told about AD um, because that, uh, that time dimension comes in and there's an interplay between aerobic and anaerobic. So let's talk about that. So this figure, there's a lot going on in it. Um, so take some time to breathe it in and understand what's going on. In stage one of this landfill, you can see our nitrogen line and our oxygen line are about at the atmospheric level. So that's showing that once the waste has been buried, um, it's going to be in an aerobic environment initially, and it's not doing too much yet. It's not producing any gas or leachate yet. Uh, in stage two, we start seeing more aerobic reactions going on. So um, our nitrogen is about the same still because no one's eating it, but we've got our aerobes eating up our oxygen. So in stage two, our oxygen goes down and we switch from an aerobic to an anaerobic. Um, we also see as we're eating up our oxygen, we're giving off CO2. This is our green curve. And as we've got these reactions going on, we're starting produce, to produce some leachate. So this gold line um, for COD and this red line for TVA, uh, total volatile acids, is showing that we're producing some leachate from the degradation that's going on. So we're giving off both gases, CO2, and leachate. In stage three, so in stage two, we've switched from aerobic to anaerobic. Now things are, our chemistry is going to switch over to the anaerobic pathway. Oops. Our leachate production is going to continue to increase. Um, we see at the bottom a little bit of a spike in hydrogen. And if you remember the anaerobic pathway, we've got acidogenesis, acetogenesis, and then before we get to our methanogenesis, we have a pool of hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and acetate that the methanogens use. So this little bump in hydrogen is because we're getting down to that spot. So we're not producing methane yet. That's happening in stage four, but we've got a little bump in hydrogen. Stage four, um, now we're actually starting to produce, we're getting further along in that anaerobic digestion sequence and we're starting to produce large volumes of gas. So our N2 line, you can see it started to tick down a little bit in stage three with that hydrogen production. In stage four, when the meth methanogenesis really kicks off, the nitrogen goes way, way down. And that's because the gas coming out of the landfill is pushing all the atmosphere that was buried with the waste out of the landfill. So our oxygen was used up by aerobes, but our nitrogen is actually getting pushed out by the landfill gas. 
we can see in the red line, our methane production goes up, 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 up. Our CO2 production is going up again. So it started off going up because of our aerobes, but it keeps going up because our anaerobes are also producing CO2 as they're producing methane. Um, this blue curve is showing the quantity of gas. Um, so you can see that goes up and that's similar to what you'd be modeling in your um, land gem model. You see that spike um, at the beginning and then the first order decay out. And then our leachate production um, over time, it's gonna go down as we're converting the leachate into gas through the degradation. So that's kind of the first half of four. And then if you look at the last half of four, everything just starts slowing down. So our gas production goes down, our methane starts going down, um, our, our leachate uh, strength is going down as everything's being eaten up. And then when we get to stage five, um, we actually see a little bit of a shift back to the aerobic. So the landfill gas is expanding out less and less and less, and we have more of an effect of the atmosphere coming back in. So we actually see a little bit of oxygen coming back in, um, and we see a little bit of more aerobic degradation. You see the CO2 come up over here. Um, so over time, as things get uh, quieter and quieter in the landfill, it's going to approach more of a normal uh, groundwater and soil gas environment. But that takes a very, very, very long time. So five is shown um, as a really short stage on here, but it's actually very, very, very long. We're riding out that first order decay curve and we have all these really slow reactions going on. So that's kind of the advantage of the bioreactor is compressing that as much as possible. Um, when we get to the post-closure care part next week, um, you'll see why this is important because you need to keep maintaining all your systems while your landfill is a threat to the environment. So that can mean putting away money for decades of work, just taking care of the landfill and making sure it's not you know, catching on fire, falling over, um, polluting the groundwater, all those things. So that's why a bioreactor is an attractive idea to compress that long, long time span that an, a landfill would naturally take to live out its life. So as we get to that stage, uh, end of stage four, stage five, um, we're approaching the stabilization of the waste. And we used this, the word stability before when we were looking at compost and AD to describe that time where there's not too much potential for more degradation to happen. We're kind of left with inert or humic substances that aren't too active. Um, so there's both a biochemical aspect of this. Um, our gas production is going down, our leachate strength is going down, and there's not uh, too much left that can be degraded. There's also a geotechnical aspect as well. So our landfill is physically, as we're producing gas and leachate, we're actually removing material from the landfill. Um, and we're also making it easier for the material there to compress because uh, we're removing some of its structural strength as things fall out um, or come into solution or turn into gas. Um, they kind of just turn into more of a, a mush and, and the whole thing mushes down uh, about 10 to 30%, it'll come down. And um, that'll mean that if you, you know, you built something on a landfill before that happens, it's going to be moving all over the place and you have to wait quite a while until that slows down to be able to do anything that requires that uh, land to not be moving around. <laughs> 